Before you've even written a line of code, your AI system could already be non-compliant with the EU AI Act. The first checkpoint is how you frame the problem. In this episode, we'll show you how to get that right before things get really expensive. But why should you care if you are building AI projects? Well, that's because the EU AI Act has become law and the real enforcement, including penalties of up to 35 million, 7% of revenue kick in on the 2nd of August, 2025, which means AI delivery teams have a really small window to know what their responsibilities are and how to fulfill them. Hey friends, I'm Ahmed. I help professionals deliver AI that works. So the EU AI Act is the first major AI specific regulation in the world. If you are developing AI in the EU or selling your solution to the EU, this applies to you. Now, I'm doing everything I can to help as many of you to get ready for the 2nd August deadline. I really am, but there's a lot to cover. So if you are delivering AI in a complex organization, by subscribing, you'll get all the really relevant and important information you need before the deadline. And this is my full focus till the deadline. Also, don't forget to hit the bell notification, otherwise you might miss the video drops. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what the EU AI Act Explorer is, because I always recommend to use this when you're trying to understand a little bit more. The navigation is much better than the actual Act, Act document itself, and so you'll see the link on the screen over there. When you go over there, you will see table of contents, chapters, and sections, and articles and all of these are legally enforceable it's the, actually the article which is the part that you really need to focus on and recitals are explaining the intent and the interpretation of the articles but they are not legally binding so that's very important to know okay so today we are covering the first step in the 10 stage ai delivery life cycle the, the problem framing step if you want to understand the full 10 stage AI delivery lifecycle and how it's impacted by the EU AI Act, then you just click the link above and go to the first video in the series if you've not already seen that. Okay, so in this step, we are trying to focus on three things. One, what's the real world problem that we're actually trying to solve? Two, is AI necessary and proportionate over here? And three, we're checking for risks data or with respect to data availability, ethical concerns, and any legal constraints. So this, at this stage, it's not about design, it's about strategic decision-making to work out whether the problem is AI suitable and legally viable. Okay, so there are four key articles that are relevant for this stage. So let's go through each one before we apply those to the actual delivery life cycle. So please just bear with me for a few minutes whilst we do that important context setting. Okay, so the first article is Article 5, Prohibited AI Practices. Some AI users are completely banned, like real-time biometric identification in public spaces, thank God. AI that manipulates people's behavior through sublim subliminal, subliminal programming and techniques. You will subscribe. Um, or other exploits completely prohibited. I'm human, so I can do that, but a machine is not allowed to do that. Okay, so if our application belongs in any of these kind of red zones, we can rule them out really early. Then Article 6 is high-risk AI classification. This has major implications in terms of the overall delivery that we use, our approach that we use, and actually what matters over here is use case more than the actual tech. So even the same model can be high risk in one use case and not so in another. So we need to assess that risk early on and then so that we can understand the delivery approach that we actually take. Next is Article 9, which is a risk management system. We need to build this up right from the beginning, especially if we have a high risk AI, there are no exceptions to that. So this starts from day one during problem framing, where you identify the risks and you tie them to the purpose, the misuse and future impacts. And last but not least, Article 10 is about data and data governance. So your training and testing data must be high quality, representative and relevant to the intended use. We need to document how you collected and prepared your data, including any gaps, biases or synthetic data used. Okay. So we can't skip this step because we think, oh, it's too early. Why do we need to worry about the data? Because we need to just understand 
what the risks and the issues are at a high level. We don't need to solve all of our problems, but this is where that kind of thinking takes place. Okay, so that was a quick run through of the four articles. Now let's see how we can apply that to our delivery lifecycle. So as I said, we are in step one of problem framing and that's split up into six further steps to get the job done. So let's start off with the first one, which is around defining the human and the business problem. We need to understand what the real world pain uh, is, who is gonna benefit from that and why. So article six is one of the big things that's gonna be relevant over here. That it really informs a lot of our overall approach for delivery as well. Now, the next thing is understanding who is actually impacted. And this is where uh, we want to make sure we're not uh, impinging on anybody fundamental freedoms or rights as defined by the EU AI Act. And so that's where Article 5 will come in over here. And there's certain things you're just not going to be allowed to do if we are infringing on certain people's rights. Then we want to understand, well, this problem that we are doing, how does that fit into our overall business workflow, right? And now, strictly speaking, it's not legally required, but it actually does support Article 6, which is, again, the high risk classification. And also, because we need to understand the data, what are the data implications of, of where it sits, it would also potentially need to factor in Article 10 as well. Okay, so now let's have a look and see whether AI is an appropriate um, solution. Is it actually needed? Can we frame it in a way that makes sure that we're compliant and we're not doing anything that is uh, um, contrary to the Act? So again, Article 6, determining whether it is high risk or not, is going to be really important over here. And Article 5, again, over here is very important, okay? So you're seeing a recurring theme as we go through each of the stages where a lot of these acts are gonna be um, referred to again as, going, as we iterate through the process. Okay, next we wanna understand what the success actually look like. How do we want our AI models and our applications to behave? And what is the criteria for that? Because that is where we can then inform our risk uh, criteria and we want to do that early on so this is where uh, uh, article 9 comes in and basically then last but not least we want to scan for early risks and any data gaps so this obviously article 9 comes in over here and article 10 comes in over here okay so now we have completed the six stages we have framed the problem we understand the four different articles and we understand how that applies in the iterative cycle. Given all of that, which of these are you currently applying? And importantly, which do you have evidence for in your AI delivery? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so in summary, problem framing isn't just about scoping the idea. It's where AI risk, compliance, and data thinking must begin. We've got four key AI articles that are relevant here, five, six, nine, and 10, um, especially for uh, high risk use cases. By aligning with best practice and regulation early on, you avoid really costly rework and set your project up for success. So here's an important question for you. Is your innovation actually legal under EU law? I was gonna say, put your answer in the comments below. Probably best not to do that, but if it's not, just fix it. Because remember, as AI delivery professionals, we're the ones that are responsible. Right, now that we frame the problem, how do you know if it's even worth solving with AI? That's where we go next week into use case definition, prioritization, and how to spot the red flags before spending months of delivery. Uh, episode three drops next week, so subscribe with the bell so you get notified when it drops. Don't miss it, see you then.